It's been just over two years since the Truth and Reconciliation Commission released its final report and put forward 94 calls to action. CBC has taken a hard look at how far we've come and how far we have left to go on the road to reconciliation. Senator Murray Sinclair was a Truth and Reconciliation Commissioner and wrote the 94 calls to action. I sat down with him and asked him if Canadians today were better informed about residential schools. Absolutely. I don't think there's any question of that. I think the question, though, is whether they're more motivated than they were on the day the report was released. And um, because over time, the energy from events like that tends to wane and drop off. So I think among the public, the, the public still largely struggles with the question of what can we do about it. I guess for people that uh, maybe don't know anything about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, how would you explain it to them? So Truth and Reconciliation Commission was about giving a forum to the survivors and also to those who had worked in the schools to be able to come together in a process to address uh, what had happened in the schools, but also what had happened in this country. When you were writing the calls to action, who, who did you have in mind? You, young Indigenous people, because um, I was said at that time in 2015, we were faced with a uh, federal government that had already indicated that through their own actions, not so much through words, but through their actions, that they were unlikely to pick up the calls to action and do anything with them. And in the event that they continued in power, <clears throat> we said that we were writing this for those people who wanted the tools to be able to do something about this. And they phrase I used to use with the staff is that we have to write this for the reasonable. I know that there's a lot of people that uh, don't believe in reconciliation after after Cormier and, and the Gerald Stanley verdict. Uh, what would you say to those people that, that feel like reconciliation isn't possible anymore? Well, reconciliation is, is inevitable. I mean, you're always going to have a relationship with this country, with other people in this country. The question is, what kind of relationship do you want? And if you want to have a relationship of distance, then have a relationship of distance, but just know how to have it. We've seen all of the, the headlines about uh, Senator, Senator Lynn Bayak. What would you say to people who think that uh, the residential schools didn't have that much of an impact on Indigenous kids? Well, what I've said to her, and that is that the only way you'll know is to talk to them. And don't talk to them and then ignore what they're telling you and make up stuff which is what she tends to do. Um, it is about understanding them at a visceral level and imagining what it would be like if you went through that process. Or if you can't do that, imagine what it would be like for your children to go through that process. And understand that the, the process uh, of taking children away for the purpose of indoctrinating them into a different culture is inherently a negative process. I know that there were criticisms about using the term cultural genocide instead of just genocide. Would you still use that term today? Cultural genocide is genocide. You know, people need to understand that. Um, and I would continue to use it. Uh, I don't think that uh, there's anything wrong with using it. I think it has meaning, it was, and it's more descriptive of what the process was really all about. Uh, the schools were not put in place for the purpose of killing the children. The schools were put in place for the purpose of killing the culture in them. And that's what we wanted people to understand. This process and, and other processes are all about too. The child welfare system does the very same thing um, because they fail to recognize the importance of that culture to indigenous children. They think that um, there is no culture. They've convinced themselves of that without realizing, in fact, that that's a cultural value that they live with. Only 10 of the calls to action have been completed out of the 94. How do you feel about that? I was surprised any have been completed, quite frankly. It's only been two years. How do you think the government has performed in terms of their obligations in the calls to action? The federal government? Um, <clears throat> well, they haven't performed very well. I don't think there's any question of that. I think we're beginning to see some change and in my conversations with government leaders, I always said 
you don't have a plan and we gave you a plan. The TRC calls to action are a plan. Pass a royal proclamation on reconciliation. Create a covenant on reconciliation and invite the provinces and the territories and the First Nations leaders and the Métis leaders and the Inuit leaders and the church organizations, all of whom have contributed to this relationship, to sign the covenant on reconciliation. What would you say to people who aren't sure of how to get involved in reconciliation? What advice would you have for them? Well, I always tell them you're already involved, whether you like it or not. This is not a um, uh, this is not an audience sport. You know, reconciliation is a participant sport, and uh, they're already engaged. So the question is, how are you engaged, and how do you want to change your engagement? That's the real question. And when people ask me what can I do, uh, I would say, well, first of all, read the report, read the summary at least. I think it's a worthwhile endeavor. Um, and if you can't um, figure it out after that, read the calls to action and figure out which one of those interests you or which one of those you can do something about and then do something because people who can should. What makes you hopeful for the future? You and others like you uh, because you have an interest in making change. You have children and your children will have children and we believe in our children. We believe that we have an obligation to make change for our children. And that's what's key. As long as we have that belief in the need to improve the future, then the future will be improved.